Greetings, humans. You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I am one of your hosts today, Jimmy Wong. And I'm your other host, Jessica's Will is getting a reprint. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Jessica's Will's getting a reprint. Nice to meet you. Oh, sorry. That's all I can think about. My name is Jake Boss. Jaco Basso. And I'm uh, here to say Jessica's Will is getting a reprint. Yeah, that's right. And it's actually happening in this pre-con. It's called Exit from Exile. It is the Gruel Play from Exile pre-con. Rakdos no more. Now we're going into the Gruel territory, baby. I love it. Yeah. Uh, these are some of our favorite episodes to do. And we love bringing on people from the office as well because everyone has a great fresh take on how they would upgrade the pre-con decks. And of course, we're going to go over the stats. 10 cards in, 10 cards out for a budget of under $30. So you could take this deck, bring it to your LGS, do a little upgrade, and blam, you're ready to play with the big boys and girls and people. Yeah, we did this last year with the Prosper uh, deck upgrade, which is a really similar strategy. So I've thought about this a lot. Nice. Well, I can't wait to get into it. But first... What if you want to pick up this pre-con? What if you want to buy some of the cards we talk about today? Well, there's one place to do it that we recommend. It's channelfireball.com slash command. That's our affiliate link. Head on over there. You can check out the Channel Fireball Marketplace where there are hundreds, maybe even thousands, I don't know how to count, of local game stores from around the country that you can order from. They have some of the best sealed product prices on the market as well as just the collection of every single card in Magic the Gathering's history if you want to upgrade your deck with a foil version of it, with a new reprint version of Jessica's Will, or maybe an older version now that the price is going to dip a little bit. Woo. So make sure you do that, or you can also enter code COMMAND at checkout, channelfireball.com slash command. That's the place to go to buy your Magic product. You're going to buy Magic cards anyway. Support the show while you're doing it. And when you get those cards, put them into an Ultra Pro sleeve, an Ultra Pro deck box. There's going to be Ultra Pro products specific to this deck. So if you like the Commander, if you like what's happening, or maybe just like Gruel, you're going to find the product that matches your tastes from Ultra Pro. They also have a brand new shop at shop.ultrapro.com slash command. You're going to find tons of product there from all all going back through Magic's history. Uh, there's stuff from old sets as well. They often have great flash sales. So it's a great place to check out, especially if you're looking to up your organizational game, get some boxes, binders, what have you. Ultra Pro's got you covered. You can also pick that stuff up at a big box retailer or your local game store. Finally, direct way to support the show is directly at patreon.com slash command zone. You've heard all the stuff before. We're just going to get right to it. We shout out one lucky patron every single episode. And this week's episode is dedicated to... Scott, Scott Chilson. Chilson. Scott, you rock. Stay chill, I guess. I'm he's chill. always chill, son. Chill, son. It's Scott. Scott, I'm chill, son. Oh, boy. He's never heard that one before, I'm sure. I'm so, oh, yeah. My name is Jake Boss. I <laughs> totally understand how it is. But. Yeah, my name is Jimmy Wong. We've got lots of things to do with that one as well. <laughs> And finally, one last note, we are doing a Command Zone live episode. We've had a blast doing them so far. Uh, the fourth one is going to be on June 16th. So you can find all those inf all that information in the show more box, the description box below the video. Those, okay. Those are so much fun. There are a lot of fun. And they all we have these huge LED walls behind us too. That's a sick. glimpse of what may be in the future. All right. Let's get into it, Jocko. Can I call you Jocko? Oh, uh, you Jacques. can, like, like Pastorius. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, so the main topic is Exit from Exile. This is the pre-con budget upgrade guide. Pretty simple. 10 cards in, 10 cards out. Total budget of around $30, and we usually leave the mana base as is, so we can focus on putting in cool cards. But before we even talk about all of that, there are some brand new cards to talk about. Oh, yeah. And uh, let's get right into it. First up is the face card of the deck. It is the commander in front. Jake wants you to read off who this person is. It's Faldorn, Dreadwolf Herald. It's one, a red and a green legendary creature, human druid. Whenever you cast a spell from exile or a land enters the battlefield under your control from exile, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. Ooh. Then one tap, discard a card, exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, so this is what we like to call impulse uh, impulsive draw, draw yeah. impulsive draw. Yeah, you you get the card in exile, but you can only play it that turn. And there's always a couple of things to note. If it says play, then you can play a land. If it says cast, then you can only cast spells. I think they've perfected the technology lately with saying play. They know that's what we want to do. Yeah. It's a little less confusing too. Yeah, and actually the way that they formulated this is really interesting. It says whenever you cast a spell from exile or a land enters the battlefield under your control from exile, 
exile. So it's not saying cast from exile and then play a land. They're just saying the land can enter from battlefield as long as it's from exile. You get a 2-2 green wolf creature token. Yeah, there's some nifty things that you can do with that too. Like let's say I have a card that makes all of my non-token creatures into lands or something like that. Oh, interesting. You can take advantage of that text. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do. Yep. So classic examples of this in the past, Jessica's Will is the card that's getting reprinted in this deck, thank goodness. Uh, and of course, it, the second te- part of that modal spell says, exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Those cards are going to be in exile. You're going to either cast a spell or play a land, and you're going to get a 2-2 every single time with Faldorn. And then you always want to not hit your land drop before you cast this spell, right? Yes. Because you once you lose that spe- that land, it's gone for good. So yeah. we'll see if we exile land in those cards and then play it from that pot. Yeah, I've definitely made that mistake a few times where you play a land and then you cast something and you go, oh, poop, I could have played that <laughs> land from out there and had a land drop for next turn. And I just got three lands. Yep. yep, yep, yep. So we've seen a lot of cards that now do this. This has typically been sort of like the Rakdos thing since Prosper Tonebound came out, but Reckless Impulse, uh, Lelia the Blade Reforge, Professional Facebreaker, great love that card. card. Yeah, great card. And Natali Primal Storm. These are all cards that care about casting stuff from Exile. Um, so it seems pretty powerful now that there are a lot of synergies and presumably inside the deck, as we will see, there are also a lot of cards that do the same thing. Right. Um, Faldorn also screams, hey, I'm making tokens. It's also kind of a, a werewolf-esque deck or a wolf deck, oddly. Yeah, I know. In red-green, there's a lot of wolf stuff that you can do. There's so many different ways that this deck can be built. Uh, one tap, discard a card. Ah, a now you... A discard you're... outlet on my commander. Yeah, that's right. You, so you can have some madness synergies going on madness. there. Lots it, of things. Yeah, there's a bunch of cool zero-cost mad- madness spells, too. So I'll get one of them zero-cost. I'll get me a 2-2. Two, yep, two. Yep, yep. Didn't quite make it into this upgrade guide, but it's cool stuff. Yeah, and you're in green, so you do have some token synergies, parallel lives. And if you're going the the wolf way, a woo, Howling Moon, <laughs> Nightpack Amateur. There's a lot of wolf synergies in red-green. That's sort of been the place where Wizards have been has been doing it the most. Yeah, maybe this is your werewolf commander. Who, yeah. I mean, Tovlar's pretty good. Yeah. So. Did you say Hoot? I said... I was going to say who knows, but then I interrupted myself because I'm like, nah, Tovalar is the man. Tovalar is the man. Or the wolf, I suppose. The wolf. Well, uh, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what time of day it is. Yeah. Uh, all right. The next uh, commander is uh, one that is interesting. So in um, this upcoming set, Battle for Baldur's Gate, there's a new mechanic called Backgrounds, and it's basically like a partner pairing except the background is not a creature in your command zone it acts like the second commander that you normally have with a partner but in this case backgrounds are legendary enchantments Mm -hmm. so this next card is durnin of the yawning portal i always see yawning and i think of yawning yawning but it's actually a whole different word it's not the yawning i'm thinking of Three and a green for a 3-3. Legendary creature, human warrior. Whenever Durnin attacks, look at the top four cards of your library. You may exile a creature card from among them. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may cast it. That spell has Undaunted. This is an old uh, commander-specific... thing which says it costs one generic mana less to cast for each opponent so it could potentially cast three mana less uh with jernin uh he has to attack and it's only on attack it's on combat damage but you get to look at four cards exile one so pretty good and, and then, it's got to be a creature that's right yes you may exile a creature card from among them so maybe like a cool artifact creature deck that's you know Ooh, it costs a, a really, three really tribal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, And then, of course, it also says choose a background. So you can have a background as a second commander. And we will get to what that background is. And we'll also have an entire episode breaking down all the possible backgrounds. Because if you decide to have Durnin as your main commander, there are like, I don't know, 20 plus different things that you could choose to be the background. Yeah, it's going to be a different build every time depending on the background that you choose. Yep, the one in this deck is tied to the whole exile theme, but we'll get right to it. Um, Durnin's obviously very good if you're able to manipulate the top of your deck, so scroll rack is really good. If you're in blue, then you can have brainstorm type effects. Um, and if you're playing black, you can have like tutoring, like vampiric tutor tutors to the top of your deck. So instead of actually drawing it, you could have Durnin being attacking and using the vampiric tutor to get that card out there. Same thing goes with like worldly tutor. It bugs me that it says when he attacks yeah because that's not happening today that's nope. next turn that's and next i don't turn, have yeah. time for that <laughs> yeah and also notably a lot of times now uh as we've seen with uh like adeline the resplendent cathar i think that's the name it's whenever any of your creatures controls attacks then adeline will trigger on the attack trigger so mm-hmm. this is a little different that durnin himself has to go into battle as a three three at cost four mana seems a little risky and hard to do Yeah, and we're talking about potentially getting some spells for free, some stuff at crazy advantage. Yeah. But 
if you're going to delay your effect a turn, you better be good. Yeah, it better be good, and whatever you're casting better be awesome. Um, all right, now let's move on to the background. So in this deck, should you decide to play Durnan as the commander, you would need to have this background be your second card in the command zone. Right, so this one in particular is Passionate Archaeologist. It's one in a red for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you... Commander creatures you own have, when you cast a spell from exile, this creature deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. Okay, so it kind of does like a Warstorm Surgy kind of thing. Uh, every time you cast a spell from exile, it's the creature, the commander creature, specifically Jernan in this case, will deal that much damage of the mana value uh, to target opponent. And it makes sense with Jernan because it, you'll be casting bigger stuff for cheaper. Ah, yeah, yeah, and yeah. get a little bit more damage in. Yeah, thanks to the undaunted ability there. Um, a lot of setup, though. A lot of setup, and the play pattern would be, right, play Passionate Archaeologist on turn two or three, and then play Durnan on four, and then attack, and then do you even have the man to cast the spell? Hopefully. But then it's going to do some damage to an opponent. Not to a creature, which does seem a little underpowered that it has to be opponent. Um, you would like to see it do both. But it makes sense there. So by turn four or five, then we start chipping away at our opponents. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and then are you? And it has to be a creature too with Durnan, so it can't even be like big crazy X spells or whatever. I'm not really hyped on this build in particular. I'm more excited about Faldorn as mm -hmm. the commander. However. The other backgrounds are worth looking at, which we'll talk about in the future. Yeah, so I would say Jernan is interesting. Maybe there's another combo out there. They think they had to include the red one here because it's a red-green deck, just in case. They always give you the option of using one of the commanders in the box as the uh, as the actual face commander. But obviously, boosting that damage might yeah. help this a little bit. Yeah, yeah. If you're playing Passion Archaeologist, not just with Jernan, but maybe with someone else that can cast stuff from Exile, then you've got Torbrin. You've got Fiery Emancipation. You could just start nuking people for a lot. Yeah, a couple of slam dunks might be worth a lot of setup. Yeah, it's a bummer too because it, it doesn't do it to creatures because you could give it Death Touch. So you could put like a Basilisk Collar on it, one of Josh's favorite things yeah. to do. But instead, you could maybe give it Life Link instead and, and you'll gain life from that. So... Okay, so those are the three sort of cards we always talk about before we get into the actual episode. So let's jump into the more important part, I think, which is what are the... Do, 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 do. Stats. Stats, stats, stats. That was a weird stats. Yeah, it was kind of deep. Yeah, that, that hit me out of nowhere. It's kind of okay. gruelly, I suppose. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of gruelly. That was a gruelly, grueling stats. <laughs> it was so anyway. <laughs> so there's actually, uh, as always, uh, we found that Wizards for the past two, three years now has been doing a really good job giving all of these pre-cons great stats. So Jake, let's run down the top one here. Here we go. Ramp. 21 cards. Holy okay, 21 moly. cards. Holy moly, indeed. Uh, there is something to be said, though, that when we consider these, well, even cards that are not good ramp, we'll still consider ramp. Even if it's a card you may cut, let's, there's like five mana ramp spells. There's four mana ramp spells that sometimes don't really work out. We've got options. But 21 is a lot. Um, and it, it that, to me, is interesting because... You're trying to play stuff from exile. Is it that satisfying to get the effects, put something in exile, and then play a ramp spell off it? I think if all of them say you get a 2-2 wolf on top of it, maybe. Maybe. So you can just ramp up and do bigger stuff next turn. So that might be a little high for us. In terms of card draw, though, we have 12 sources of it. Mm -hmm. Now, Very nice. keep in mind that we will consider some forms of impulsive draw as a form of card draw. It is temporary. You only get it for that turn when you exile it, but it is technically card advantage. And you kind of come out even because your commander is going to be triggering off of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always going to get that 2-2. Two -two. It's going to be a lot of creatures on the board. Single target removal. Six sources. Okay. So that's about bad. Yeah. This is red green too. So I'm presuming uh, even before I look into the deck and before you may look into it, that the single target removal isn't necessarily uh, as broad as, you know, a lot of other colors might be able to give you. Red green to me says direct damage, a lot of artifact enchantment removal. And I think that's some of the more important types of removal they have these days. Yeah. Uh, and then board wipes, four of them. Here we go. Here we go. That's a little higher than we normally see. I think I've seen like around two or three. Yeah, it's funny because this is a go wide deck too, and they chose to give this one kind of the higher end yeah. of precon board wipes. Yeah, uh, it's interesting because too, red and green don't have actually great board wipes. Uh, red has, they're all damage based for the most part, or green mm -hmm. is like kind of weird and either puts out a bunch, of, a bunch of beasts that fight a bunch of other things or makes everyone shuffle their graveyards like the Great Aurora and their, their board states into the, the deck. So Green just can't be subtle. 
It cannot, yeah. Uh, but when it comes to the stats that really matter, for instance, cast from exile, there are 38 sources of that. In a normal deck building template, how many uh, things your deck is trying to do would you put in there? I would say at least 25 to 30. 38 um, is pretty darn good. So 38 is pretty darn good. And keep, keep in mind that this is a lot of it is card advantage when you get to cast stuff from exile or cares about it. So it's just basically, it's almost, it's enabler on top of what the impulsive draw is doing. And I, did, I didn't realize, but we actually did classify impulse draws differently. And there are 10 versions of impulse draw there. So 12 card draw, 10 impulse draw. I would count impulse draw as like 60 to 70% of a card being drawn. And if the deck is set to make take advantage of that, then it counts for a little bit more. Yeah, if everything says, also create a 2-2 body, how much yeah. of a card is a 2-2 token worth? Yeah. A little bit of the, something. A little bit of something, yeah. And if there's other cards that care what new cast something from exile, like during it and all that stuff, maybe there's a little bit more too. Oh, or in the background. Um, and then, of course, tokens. Like you just mentioned, there are eight things that care about tokens. So it seems like the deck has a, uh, to, what it, to what it looks like to me, a pretty good balance. I think that this deck is ready for 10 cards in, 10 cards out, and it can go in a lot of different directions with just those 10. Yeah, and even from us just saying the stats, you may be at home listening or wherever you are thinking, yeah, maybe you could probably pull out some of the ramp, maybe some of the cast from exile, depending on what those cards are and what you're trying to sort of refine the deck into. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily need a huge overhaul. Like yep, yep, yep. Okay, and that's great, by the way. That's what we're looking for. The very early pre-cons, as many of you out there know, were a bit more all over the place, and doing the 10 cards in and out experiment was much more difficult. So we like refinement here. Yeah, like it, those decks were never doing what they were trying to do all that well. Yeah. They were the bones of it, plus a bunch of other cool commander cards. Yeah, cool commander cards. But now like, they have options of where they can put those cool different <laughs> cards. Yeah, you would take apart the deck almost immediately and just keep the commander. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about the deck value. This is always really important for a lot of players, uh, which is what is the deck actually worth? Should you just decide to get it and discombobulate it, take it apart, put it into other things, or maybe go and trade some of the pieces out and put some of the cards into a new deck or whatever it is. Uh, and as always, we take these prices prior to the deck reveal. So in terms of the reprints and all that stuff, when the deck gets revealed, when people know it's getting reprinted, those prices will change. So this is prior to all of that. And the total reprint value is $90.50. $90 and 50 50 cents. Cents. <laughs> Almost $91. If you had to round up in middle school, you'd be going to $91. So we took the average pre-con reprint value of the past three years, and it averages around $80. And we also were able to compare this to the other pre-cons. And this seems to be the lowest value pre-con, even though it has one of the most hyped up reprints of the entire set. Everything about this deck right now is making me float. So far, we got good yeah. stats. We got a cool commander. We got uh, the background thing. Lots to be excited about. Yep. And this value, this is the lowest, and it's already pretty good. Yeah, it's already better than the average, which is great. So let's talk about some of those notable reprints. So these are all the cards in the deck that are worth $2 or more. And there are five cards that are worth $5 or more, and 10 cards that are worth $2 or more, including those five, by the way. So let's talk about the big one, obviously. Con editors, get the confetti ready. Yeah, yeah, I want to see confetti raining down as we say that Jessica's Will. Woo! has been reprinted Let's and go. the first time it was printed notably was commander legends the first that's time. right yeah. yeah and we cracked a whole bunch of boxes of that and we ended up with at least five dollar jessica's wills or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah and then people started realizing this card is the truth it's the truth and went straight up to like 20 bucks very good in mono red and very good in red plus one color as well yeah even in a three color deck you're kind of asking yourself i should probably play it. i should probably play it yeah it's it's one of those types of cards um not to the level of like a dockside extortionist but still extremely powerful especially Especially when you're able to recur it, play it again, and there's a lot of decks that can play the spell more than once in the game. Right. So this card was at seventeen dollars and twenty five cents. So hovering above the fifteen dollar range, maybe not as high as twenty. Um, and it is a truth, just straight up. It yep. is incredible. Um, and unlike Dockside, this isn't something that's always going to be super good. Yeah. It's kind of a roll of the dice. It you have the potential for it to be amazing, mm -hmm. uh, but. You know, an underwhelming Jessica's Will isn't going to ruin your game. Isn't going to ruin your game, and I've had plenty of underwhelming Jessica's Wills, but that's not making me cut the card anytime soon nope. for my decks, yeah. Uh, the next card is another card that hasn't seen a reprint in a while and is very popular in this type of format, which is Stolen Strategy. That's a nifty card. Yeah, so it's four in a red and for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of each opponent's library until end of turn. You may cast non-land cards from among those exiled cards, and you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast those spells. Very good in a two-color deck in red-green because you're not going to have access to a bunch of colors. Great in this deck. Very good in this deck, yeah, because you're going to get three potential hits. And you, sometimes you get some great hits off other people's decks. Unfortunately, Stolen Strategy doesn't let you cast their, play their lands. 
but that doesn't seem to matter too much. I think you're going to have plenty of that impulse draw happening on your own board state. They don't need to care so much about that. You're just going to get basically a draw three at the beginning of each of your upkeeps. Yeah, like we mentioned earlier, this is technology that Wizards has been refining and yeah. improving. And uh, back in the day, they didn't used to let us play the cards. It yeah, just, yeah, yeah. You may cast non-land spells, but play is even less words too. So everybody has. <laughs> and sometimes they'll even make newer versions that are only cast so they try and keep it a little bit under balance. But Stolen Strategy is a great card. And that was actually saying, at fifteen dollars, fourteen ninety. It's crazy. Which is really close to what Jessica's will is, and I would put Jessica's will as a much more powerful card than Stolen Strategy. Yeah, so that's really good for everybody. Yeah, great for everyone. Uh, the next is a. Uh, this has gotten a lot of popularity. It's Lelia, the Blade Reforged. I was just playing with this card at lunch. Yeah, and how did it work out. The best part about it is I missed a couple of triggers. Oh, okay. Because the way that Lelia reads. You're actually, let me just read it. Yeah. Two in a red, Lelia the Blade Reforged, legendary creature, spirit warrior. It's a 2-2 with haste. When Lelia attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. So another instance of an impulsive draw. Yep. But whenever you exile one or more cards from your library and or your graveyard, put a plus one plus one counter on Lelia. Ah, yes. Not just from her trigger. But Any from all trigger. of our other triggers that we'll have going on. Yeah, and that will happen plenty in this deck for She's gonna sure. She's going to be huge. Yeah, Lelia is great too because when she attacks, she instantly gets both the triggers. She gets the top card of your library and it counts as exiling cards, so she also gets a plus one, plus one counter. Yeah, she kind of is a cantrip-ish. Yeah. An yeah. impulsive cantrip. I impulsive do, is a great word for impul- this. Yeah, yeah. I really do like this card though because you can play the land. It swings when it comes down. That's sort of the thing that we are worried about with Jernan is that he does not get to attack that same turn. Right. Um, so that was about $7, a really strong creature. This creature, I think in any mono red deck too, you could legitimately have a reason to play this card because mm-hmm. you're going to be playing, um, reckless was the, the one where you can play it from your graveyard for two in a red and you draw a card, discard two, draw two, discard two. I think it's in, I think it's in your ads here, actually. It is. It's faithless looting. <laughs> oh, oh, duh. I don't know why. I always forget. I was that thinking name. of an impulsive draw card that was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But faithless looting again. You exile it from your graveyard, so that's another place where Lelia starts to shine. Uh, the next big reprint is Xenagos the Reveler. So this is just a classic red green planeswalker. It allows you to put satyrs onto the battlefield, but more importantly, it actually allows you to add a bunch of mana. So X mana in any combination of red and or green, or X is the number of creatures you control. We're gonna hey, have a lot. We're gonna have a lot. A bunch of wolves. Each of those wolves counts as a mana. Woo! Woo! Pretty good stuff. Um, and then from there, the other reprints are Urbrask the Hidden. This cool. is a old Urbrask. It's a five mana, gives your creatures haste. Uh, but also, I think the more important part of this, because there's lots of haste enablers in red, is that it says creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. It kind of gives you a little bit of advantage and takes away a little bit of advantage from them. Yeah. And it's like five mana worth of disparity between what the two of you have. Yep. And it's the same with uh, the other Urbrask, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, I I do like this Urbrask a lot because let's say you're making a bunch of tutus. Well, most creatures in Magic will be able to block that So being able to have creatures enter the battlefield tapped, if you're trying to run someone down, they can't just poop out a lot of creatures and hope to block you the next time around. Urbrask is the kind of card that's going to stop that from happening. Right. Uh, And then downwards towards the under $5, we have Nature's Lore. What? Three visits. These cards went up that high? Yeah. Hooray. They're so good because they say you can search your library for a forest card. So you can get your Stomping Ground. You can get your Taiga, uh, whatever it is. I forget the red, green one. Cinder Glade, maybe? Yep. So there are lots of different cards that say forest in them. If you're even playing in a three-color deck, you have the new, like, Zeator's Proving Grounds. That, that might not be the right one. But you have the new lands that are the Triomes or the new ones from New Capandum that you can also find with one of these, which makes them really, really good. Yeah, and they come onto the battlefield untapped. Very yeah. notable. Yeah, if they don't enter the battlefield tapped already. Right. Um, so you actually gain the mana back. Sometimes you can chain these together, play nature's lore, still have enough mana to do the next thing that you're looking to do. What I'm liking about our reprints so far is a lot of them are above $4. Pretty yeah. good. And extremely useful in other decks. Like we just said, right. just because, well, you can play in almost any red deck. Nature's lore, three visits. It's some of the best ramp spells in Magic's history. And we've also got Vivian, Champion of the Wild. She was $2.20. I like this one a lot. Tuna Green, you may cast creature spells as though they had flash, plus one, until your next turn. Up to one target creature gains vigilance and reach. Minus two, look at the top three cards of your library. Exile them face down, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. For as long as it remains exiled, you may look at that card and cast it if it is a creature card Uh aha for loyalty there you go it's a green uh planeswalker that allows you to cast cards from exile and just gives you creature spells have flash too so even if you you know it's great very very handy to have that on a card it's 
you're, it's going to pay itself off very handsomely very well over the long term yeah and it's only a minus two on a four low two planeswalker we can activate that today yep. so that's good and uh i mentioned this board wipe earlier but not in name it's azuri's predation it's love this eight one. mana board wipe for each creature your opponent controls create a four four green beast creature token each of those beasts fights a different one of those creatures so it's kind of a board wipe sometimes the beasts do not make it through things like eldrazi and just six sixes and all that yeah, this is an eight mana spell type uh, event that happens. Yeah, it's a big one. When you put eight mana into a card, you expect the board to look different afterward. And whether the whole thing gets wiped or not, somebody's going to have a ton of beasts. Yep. Uh, chaos is going to ensue when you cast this card. Yeah, even if you don't kill all those creatures, you might end up making 20 beasts or whatever. And then that'll do her. 10 of them die, and you still have 10 left. Yeah. So, and you've got all your wolves. So you're going to be able to overrun someone for sure. Yeah. And the last card that's notable reprint is Mana Gorger Hydra. I remember the Old first school. time I played against this card. It destroyed me. Yeah, uh, two in a green for a creature Hydra with Trample. It's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever a player casts a spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Mana Gorger Hydra. Yeah, by turn, if you play this one turn around, it's already a 4-4. Four, four, and it's hitting someone with Trample. And then it's a 9-9. Nine, nine, and then it's a 15-15. And then it's a 20. Right. It just spirals out of control if no one deals with it. And Trample being on the card is key with stuff yeah. like this. Like there's other cards, Tori and Mahler, Forgotten Ancient, stuff like that. Yeah. That does this effect. And boy, do they want Trample. They want <laughs> Trample real bad. Uh, at least Ancient, uh, that Ancient one gets to move its counter somewhere else. But yeah, other Forgotten Ancient. But yeah, yeah. Mana Hydra just by itself. And this is great, I think, in lower power metas where maybe someone's exhausted their single target removal. It just comes down and can threaten to end someone's game given enough time. Yep, we're happy to see it back. Yeah. So now that we've talked about the reprints and the deck value and the stats, Jake, this one's pretty obvious, but oh, who yeah. do you think we should be running as the commander of the deck? I'd say that Faldorn's flexibility gives you enough time to set up your engine rather than Durnan and the background, which requires... Uh, more setup to just get your setup going yeah and if someone gets rid of the background too that's going to feel really bad yeah it doesn't get me very excited i'm more happy to have one creature card hit the battlefield next turn we're popping off maybe even this turn yeah not to mention faldorn gives you the ability to have impulsive draw on the commander itself so even if you have nothing going on in your hand you can pay one tap faldorn and start to go off that way right there's so many different ways to use our cards with this commander so yeah i like faldorn quite a bit as well okay let's talk about the best cards in the deck and all three of them are reprints sorry yeah. to the other cards now if you can't guess what we think is the best card in the deck I don't know if you've been listening to the episode so far. <laughs> <laughs> it's all we can talk about. Yeah, it's clearly Jessica's will. Uh, again, not it's not even that tied to the fact that it's great with the commander. It's just a very good card. And now that it also synergizes with the commander, it's even better. You're going to make some 2-2s two out of it, and you're going to be able to exile cards. And your commander's 3 mana, so it's pretty reasonable that you're going to get your commander out and then cast Jessica's will shortly afterwards. Right. Um, after that, we have Wild Magic Sorcerer, which came out in the last... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons set, which is kind of cool. Yeah, this card is so nifty. Uh, it's three and a red for a creature orc shaman. The first spell you cast from exile has Cascade. Yeah. Four, three. And so cascading a spell means you're also casting it from exile. Another wolf. Yeah, another wolf. Uh, also, you're just going to get free spells, by the way. You play a four drop with this out. You flip cards until you find a three drop or lower, and you cast that spell for free. Yeah, I love cards like this that are powerful in one specific deck, but it's not going to take over the format. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, for cool. sure. Uh, and then, of course, Atali Primal Storm. We mentioned oh. Atali earlier. Oh, bam. I wish, maybe, I don't know if it's too much, but maybe we can have the animation for it playing somewhere because yes. it's so incredible. It's, That's, I think it's my favorite animation we've ever done. Let's watch. <gasps> and if they didn't play it, or you're listening at the audio version, imagine a really cool dinosaur yeah. <laughs> roaring at you that looks exactly like the card art from Atelier Primal Storm. That's amazing. I should do audiobooks. <laughs> what am I doing? Um, this one's easy. Whenever Atelier Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. Oh. Then you may cast any number of spells from among those cards without paying their mana cost. A nightmare on spell table because <laughs> we're all refueling the top card of our decks and we're like you can have this for free yeah but that doesn't work like, through how webcam. do i cast you, that'd be incredible if they pass it to you and you somehow pulled it out from the other side of the webcam <laughs> yeah it's but nonsense that technology does not exist um but yeah it's always really really good especially if you have urbrask out that gives your creatures haste this coming into the battlefield swinging once can often have enough impact to completely swing the game in your favor and sometimes even just help you outright win on the spot What's the dream scenario with Atali, would you say? Atali, well, I want to have Urbrask out. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to be ramping to it quickly with my Nature's Lore and my three visits. 
And then what I want to do is, or, okay, either I have a, your brass out or I have Vivian, and I can cast Atali on the end step. <laughs> so then you swing out. You've got your commander out. You hit four non-land cards. You cast them all immediately. You get those four two twos. Oh, yeah, four two twos from Faldoran, and then, uh, I don't know, you just celebrate. You have Parallel That's Lives four. out, too. You know, maybe you threw that in the deck, so you actually have eight I tell you what you do is you shuffle up and you play another one. You play another one. Because <laughs> you just won. Yeah, you, you have Parallel Lives and you hit token makers off everyone else too. Yeah. So <laughs> you just go nuts. Or you hit other ways to cast spells from exile. Uh, maybe you hit, no, it's, okay. Atali swings. You hit four Jessica's Wills. Oh, baby. <laughs> because everybody bought this deck. Everyone bought <laughs> Channelfireball.com slash command. There you go, exactly. Yeah, so that's the dream with Atali. But Atali's in the deck. It's a very good card, obviously. It's a card that just wins games on the spots. Okay, so that's a good breakdown so far of the deck, but we've got a lot more to come, including the most exciting part of the episode, which is what 10 cards Jake decided to put in and what 10 cards we're going to take out of the deck. But before we get to that, a message from our mid-roll sponsors. Psst, hey buddy, it's your pal Notion Thief. Wait, 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 don't remove me yet. I want to warn you about the real thieves out there. Tech companies stealing your data. Web history, metadata, searches, they nab it all, make a profile on you, then sell it to the highest bidder. I'm a crook, and even I think it's despicable. That's why I recommend using ExpressVPN every time you go online. They keep you completely camouflaged while browsing. See, ExpressVPN takes your IP address and replaces it with a different, secure IP address. That way, sites like Google, Twitter, and Facebook can't track your activity. ExpressVPN encrypts all your data, so it's protected from hackers or any other scoundrels who might want to spy on you. Plus, it's easy to use. Just download the app on your phone or computer, tap a button, and you're protected in a flash. Easy peasy. So start using ExpressVPN today and let those tech jerks know who your information really belongs to. Me. Uh, I mean, you. Slip of the tongue there. <laughs> Protect your data with the number one rated VPN provider today. Visit expressvpn.com slash command to get three months free on a one-year package. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN.com slash command. Go to expressvpn.com slash command to learn more. <laughs> it's shockingly beautiful. Greetings, mages. I am Storm Kiln Artist. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, I'll craft you a treasure. You're gonna spend the mana anyway, so why not get some back, right? Well, if that sounds like a good upside, just wait until you try Upside, the app. Upside does for money what I do for mana, giving you cash back on purchases that were already part of your game plan, like gas, groceries, and restaurants. It's basically an auto-include for any smartphone. To get started, download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play, then use promo code COMMAND and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. From there, just claim an offer, check in at the business, and watch the treasures start stacking up. You can earn three times more with Upside than you can with complicated credit card rewards or loyalty programs, and you can cash out at any time. So stop missing all those potential triggers. The next time you tap out for food or gas, get some value back with Upside. Download the free Upside app and use promo code COMMAND to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code COMMAND. We now return to the Underworld Cook with Asmorana Mordica Dice Tinnacoldicar, brought to you by Factor, only on the Food Token Network. Oh, welcome back, food fans. Look, I had a great recipe prepared, but then the ingredients for my Beeble Bore staged a jailbreak, and Grizzle Brand ate my air fryer. Now I'm hungry, tired, and totally out of time to cook. Thank the nine hells I've got these meals from Factor that are ready to eat in only two minutes. Factor makes it easy for me to eat clean 24 seven. With fresh, never frozen prepared meals, they're so delicious, you wouldn't believe they're actually good for you. They deliver chef crafted nutritious meals straight to your door with no meal prep. So you don't have to hunt down and subdue any of your ingredients. You can choose from over 29 dishes, including vegan, keto, and low calorie options. But tonight, I'm having their chickpea curry with forbidden black rice. Oh no! They know I'm eating the forbidden black rice! I can't go back to prison! I gotta go! go, go, go. Head to go.factor75.com slash command120 and use code command120 for $120 off. That's code command120 at go.factor75.com slash command120 for $120 off. All righty, we are back talking about the, what is this one called again? <laughs> exit, exit, exit from exile. 
Is that the Banksy documentary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exit from, through the front door the, in exile. From the top of your deck. From the top of your deck. So, Al, Jake, when you got this deck and you started looking through it, what were your sort of quick impressions or evaluations? What stood out to you in terms of how you went into your thought experiment and what cards I want to add in and what cards I want to take out? Well, I thought to myself, crap, this deck has everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I talked to the fellows downstairs, our writers, yeah. and I said, hey, can you set me up with a scryfall link for every single card legal in this deck that says exile on it? Ah, uh, okay. So I tried to read every single commander card sorted by EDH rec, rec rank uh, to figure out what was going to fit best in this. Um, and I like leaning into... Uh, the strategy a little bit more, but I also wanted to experiment and get a little weird. Nice. Well, I like the ads that you've made so far. And so you all watching along, remember the budget is around $30, typically less, very, very rarely more for this exercise. And we, again, these are the prices at the time of us recording this episode. So let's go into the 10 cards that you would add to the deck. Number one, Urabrask Heretic Predator. Wait a second. I thought Urabrask was already in this deck. No, this Predator is not. Easy, Jimmy. You might think that that's the same one, but this is the brand new one from Streets of New Capenna. It's three red, red, legendary creature, Phyrexian Praetor with haste. It's a 4-4. Four, four. The beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. You may play it nice. this turn, so I get an extra nice, card. Nice, nice. Cool. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, the next time they would draw a card this turn, they, ins they instead exile the top card of their library. They may play it this turn. Oh, interesting. So All I right. take your card that you draw for turn and turn it into an impulsive draw. So you have to cast it that turn or they won't get access to it ever again. And you, so you get all the downsides of impulsive draw, but you don't have any of the benefits set up that I'll have. Right. And Urbrex basically draws you two cards at the beginning of your turn, which is kind of nice. And we like stuff that does something the turn that it comes into play. It's a 4-4 four, four with haste, so he's going to be slam dunking and slapping a little bit. <laughs> slam but, dunking and slapping. <laughs> he's just a little late. Court. Basketball has evolved. <laughs> well, let's say I leave him as a blocker, okay? I've got a 4-4 four, four body. Didn't do anything this turn on your upkeep, however. Ah, that's right. I'm immediately taking away draws. So it's the same discussion about how the old Urbrask took advantage away from your opponent and gave you just a little bit more mm -hmm. and that in that disparity is where you find the five mana value yep same thing here i'm taking away a little bit of your card advantage adding another card to mine yeah and the, it feels worth five mana to me i mean a lot of decks will not like that second land a uh, second line of text permission based yeah. decks decks that want to hold cards in their hand um you have an 11 deck that <laughs> wants oh. to have 11 cards in its hand now it's like wait i have to ugh, I, I, I it takes i have to draw one more card now to get past that and uh, some of our friends who love drawing cards they have to show us what they exiled as well. Yep, 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 so, yep. Very interesting. They're stuck with uh, revealing their plans to us. Yeah, I like that though. Obviously, synergizes super well with the commander, and that card is about six dollars and twenty cents right now. So that's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good for a mythic rare. Yeah. All right. Next up, we got Library of Lang, one of the oldest cards in Magic's history. It's one mana for an artifact that says you have no maximum hand size. Not that relevant here. Not that but... relevant. Yeah, because you're exiling. And if you if an effect causes you to discard a card, discard it, but you may put it on top of your library instead of into your graveyard. Wait a minute. Jimmy. What does our commander do? Oh my goodness. One tap, discard a card. But because of Library of Lang, that card I'm discarding, I'll put it on top. Then the effect resolves. Exile the top card of your library. There you it is. You may play this turn. Whoa. Whoa. Wait, this is insane in the deck. You may have just found the literal best card to put in the deck. It's so nifty. Yeah, it's super nifty. It costs one to put out. Very rarely will someone blow up your Library of Lang. <laughs> It's not worth it. And it's one mana, too. We're not ramping on turn one all that much, so. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in the random chance that someone else is trying to get you to discard stuff, then, you know, not so great. Um, the cool thing is that Library of Lang is a May ability. So if you just want to actually discard a card with a flashback or whatever into your graveyard, you can still. But we're with, turning cards into cards. We're converting cards into this. We're taking the cards and going one-to-one -one ratios into <laughs> what it used to be, but getting a wolf out of it this time. Yeah, and you get to choose. You can just you can do it for lands every single turn, right? So mm -hmm. you always get the land plus wolf, which is really good. We love those plays, especially in that Prosper deck too, because it yeah. says when you play a land from exile, or sorry, when a land enters the battlefield under your control from exile, you get this benefit. So I'm getting the mana and this other thing. Yeah. Whereas if I'm just casting a spell, I need to have that money today. Right, and I don't right. got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Land so drop is free. Land drops are free, one per turn. You gotta love it. Uh, next up, we have the Surly Bat. Uh, oh, by the way, Library of Lang. It's like a buck twenty-five. Great deal. Yeah, for the decks that like it. 
All right, let's talk about Surly Badgersaur, the next one up. Uh, this card's a lot of fun, too. It's three into red for a creature, Badger Dinosaur. Whenever you discard a creature card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Okay. Whenever you discard a land card, create a treasure token. Whew. Whenever you discard a non-creature, non-land card, Surly Badgersaur fights up to one target creature you don't control. Okay, so an enchantment or an artifact uh, or an instant or a sorcery, it's going to fight a creature. But the other ones, you're making it bigger or you're getting a treasure token for your lands. So, it's like it's eating our cards up. Yeah, yeah. By the way, with Library of Lang, it still works because you are still discarding that card. Yeah, it's not a replacement effect. Yeah, so you could discard the card, Library of Lang triggers, you're going to put it on top of your deck, you get a, a treasure from the Surly Badger Star, and then Faldorn is going to get the ability to play that card and it's the land. There's so much going on with those, just those three cards together. Yeah, the dream scenario is you discard a land card to the Surly Badger Star, Uh and so you get that treasure token. Library Lang lets you put it on top of your library. Yep. You play that land. You get the 2-2 uh, two, two wolf. Now I've got two mana, and then I'll go cast my Nature Slower. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's a nice combo. And your board state looks so good because you're able to chain together two or three spells thanks to the extra treasure, thanks to the fact that you're manipulating the top of your deck with Library of Lang as well. This is a cool deck because it rewards people who are very good at sequencing. Yeah. So if you're a magic player that's deep in, you know, deep in the, hard in the paint, is that a thing that we say? <laughs> yeah, go hard in the paint <laughs> is another basketball term yeah I, I do not play basketball either by the way i'm so bad at it oh i play basketball every single weekend and i work out with the boys and uh, <laughs> i have a very tuned Me diet and the boys were slam dunking and slapping our way through the game in the library of lang although i will say there is a lot of slapping in basketball because they're, they're kind of just trying to get the ball too it's slap ball really Sla <laughs> slap ball everyone's favorite so anyway yeah surly badger Star, really good ad here um it, not to mention it turns faldorn into semi removal if surly badger Star is big enough even if it's just like a five five it should be able to kill most things through that fight of Effect. Right. So you can instant speed Faldor now, should you need to hold that up to get rid of a creature um, by discarding a non-creature, non-land card. Yeah, it's a great, uh, it turns our discard, exile top card library thing more into a flexible effect. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's a tool belt for Faldorn. And if you're discarding an instant, that's even better because you can cast that instant at that moment and get all the benefits. Yeah. Uh, next up is March of Reckless Joy. This is a new card from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and it seems to be a pretty evergreen card, or I guess it was an ever-red card in a lot of decks now. X and a red for an instant. As an additional cost to cast a spell, you may exile any number of red cards from your hand. This spell costs two less to cast for each card exiled this way. Exile the top X cards of your library. You may play up to two of those cards until the end of your next turn. So like commune with lava, but I'm limited to just two of them. Yeah, just two of them. But it's not you, the worst. It's not the worst. And you can actually sync. Let's say you just have extra red cards in your hand that you don't need. You can exile them and you can get two extra cards seen for each card that you exile. So you're turning one into two, especially if that red card is no longer relevant on the board. And you can actually make some pretty big plays here. In other games, some of my favorite things is the way that other TCGs will like use cards. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here we're kind of unlock unlocking that for Magic. If I can't use this card in this situation, it's not a dead card in my hand. Right, I can turn it into something that I like. So it's like converting stuff yeah. into useful stuff. Yeah, and again, it's till the end of your next turn, so you can do it on someone else's end step. You can even do it on your own turn and wait a whole turn cycle and do it then. Right. So. Uh, next up, we have... Oh, by the way, that card is 15 cents right now. That's a heck of a deal. It's a heck of a deal, well, I think. Well, this one is 5 cents. Ooh, nice. And it's Merchant of the Veil. It's 2 in red for a 2-3. It says 2 in a red, discard a card, draw a card. But it's an adventure card. So you can cast the adventure side first for 1, which is uh, Haggle, a 1 red instant. You may discard a card if you do, draw a card. Then you exile it, and now it's on an adventure, and you can cast it for two and a red. And get a 2-2, two, two, thanks to your commander. This card is not bringing down the house, okay? Mm -hmm. But it says discard on it, kind of interesting, whatever. But we're here for the adventure. I think that this is one of those uh, signposts for people that I want to put in this guide. Yeah. Of maybe this adventure isn't the best one, but there are tons of adventures in red green. Mm. You could make a freaking adventure deck here. Yeah, because <laughs> of all you're casting the adventures from exile. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. There's a lot of possibilities. Merchant of the Veil, vale, interesting, but that's for somebody else to figure out. <laughs> I like it. I mean, for me, it's all about cool synergies, right? And if you're doing something for cheap and you're discarding and drawing and discarding is something you want to do in this deck already because of Faldorn and you're building around that, this is just, it's like uh, putting a little bit of oil in the machine. It's going to help it run more smoothly. And at a really low mana cost, the first time when you cast Haggle, it's just a red mana. Right. 
Uh, next up, we have another very cheap spell in terms of cost and ca casting cost. It's Faithless Looting. We mentioned this earlier. Right. So it's a red man for a sorcery. Draw two cards, then discard two cards, and flashback for two and a red. You can cast this card from your graveyard for its flashback cost, then exile it. This is just help you filter through your deck. You're right. already discarding cards. If Library of Lang is out, you're feeling really good about that part of it. Or say you need to dump a card to Impulsive Draw or something. Yep. Uh, like, if you just need to be up a card this turn, you don't mind having Faithless Looting in the graveyard. Oh, definitely not. I would say, Faldorn, if you have any cards in your hand, you have a seven-card hand, and one of them likes to be in the graveyard, you are so happy to put it there, rather than a land that you might need later, or even the powerful spell that you can't cast quite yet. So Faithless Looting is really good in that regard. And 40 cents. Next card is Bergy, God of Storytelling. And on the backside, it is Harnfell, Horn of Bounty. <laughs> and that's probably what we're going to be playing most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Because, again, another discard outlet. Uh, maybe we can add in some more discard themes later on as we tune the deck. But discard a card, exile the top, card, top two cards of your library. And you may play those cards this turn. So this is also really good late game. Mm -hmm. If you are drawing dead, you draw a land, cool, discard it. Get two more cards off your library, and you can play play those cards this turn so it's a really good way for you to start getting through your deck especially in those dire situations when you just need to find that one thing to keep you ahead and then with the front side is pretty relevant too because let's say i know i can have a big turn yeah uh if i'm running out of gas i'll cast uh harnfell but if I'm not, and I just want a ton of mana, I'm going to play Bergy and then get the benefit of a ton of red mana uh, as I'm casting my stuff and have one of those crazy JLK turns where I have to move in on somebody else's board. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you cast Haggle on Merchant of the Veil, you get that mana back instantly. Same mm -hmm. goes for Faithless Looting. So Bergy is great, especially if you have the cheaper spells. Even Library of Lang, all of these cards will give you that mana back so you can just keep going and moving forward. Yeah, like the reverse side is in the theme of this deck, but the front side of this card is such a good stuff card. Very good card, yeah. Uh, next up, it's a 10-mana card. I'm glad you put this in there. Oh, yeah, and just a quick mention, Bergy oh, right. is $4.10. $4.10. And it's relevant because this next card, Apex Devastator, yeah. is only $7.25. Yeah, it's actually the most expensive card you've included on your list of cards to add in. What on earth? But anyway, it's eight green green for a creature, Chimera Hy Hydra for a 10-10, and it's got Cascade, 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 Cascade. Four instances of Cascade on a single spell. That means... Right, I'm not just being dramatic. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to hit every card that you want to, I think, as a result, because it's 10 mana, goes down, finds the next one, and then it keeps going down from there. And we got so many ramp spells in this deck, we could probably hit eight green green, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. And you're going to be able to get all the way down to one because you got your Faithless Lootings and stuff in there now, too. Uh, I'll have four wolves. Four wolves from Faldorn, yeah, very good. And here's the thing, if you can't cast a spell early on and you know that you need to get fast, this is also a very happy discard from my hand type of spell. Exactly. With, with Faldorn, yeah. Yeah, there's so many cards where like, well, not today, let's go try again with Faldorn. Yep. So. Uh, and that's seven dollars and twenty five cents. Uh, grab it now. Gra <laughs> it's a great card. Yeah, I said this about Jessica's well on one of my recent yeah. upgrade guides. Is, well, grab it now because it's gonna go up. It's gonna go up. It got reprinted here, so I guess I was wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you had no idea. Pick up these last two cards. Yeah. Uh, anyway, next up is Conspiracy Theorist. Great card. One in a red for a two two human shaman. Uh, the top line not as relevant. Whenever Conspiracy Theorist attacks, you may pay one and discard a card if you do draw a card. Some discard synergies, but. Whenever you discard one or more non-land cards, you may exile one of them from your graveyard. If you do, you may cast it this turn. Oh my goodness. So this is very similar, kind of, in a way to Library of Lang, which it says, we want you to discard cards because we're going to be able to reuse them. And for just one in a red to play the Conspiracy Theorist, that's a really cheap cost. This can get out early, and people don't pay this much attention because it doesn't seem like a great card. But in this deck, pretty darn good. Yeah, honestly, every time I look at this card, I look at the art, and I'm like, man, I want to cut this card. But then I read the text box, and I'm like, oh, it's so good. Yeah, like, it's The guy so just looks like he's shouting at me, and he's mad, and I don't need that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but he's going to help you get those cards back from your yeah. graveyard. All right, so uh, that's 40 cents. This last one is $1.20 for an uncommon from Neon Dynasty. Now, this, I will say, get this card. It's going to go up. Slam Dunk Containment Construct. It's a two-mana artifact creature construct for two and... Uh, or that's a two one excuse me and when you discard a card you may exile that card from your graveyard if you do you may play that card this turn okay so in any deck that's doing any amount of looting or discarding really good it converts our cards uh into these wolf benefits right yeah like we're trying to make a ton of wolves to close out this game and to do that we got to be playing stuff from exile so yep. between yep. faldorn and containment construct we're gonna have two 
uh, impulsive draws, essentially. Yeah, and again, you can play the card from Exile, so it can be lands as That's well. Right. Containment Construct just works great, again, with like Faithless Looting and so many other things, because now instead of discarding two cards, you're just discarding one and the other one's the land that you're playing from Exile exactly. and you trigger your commander over and over again. So you spend one mana, activate your commander, discard that land yeah. card, uh, and then you can play it from Exile. It's untapped. Now you've got that 2-2. Two, two. So we're back mana neutral, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's pretty darn good. Yeah. Okay. So... That total is 10 cards for $21.45. Really good. Yeah, really, something really I good. love about a strategy like this that's so common and built into Magic nowadays is you have a ton of options. Yeah, a lot like, of options. Read Exile on every single creature card or every single card that is legal for this uh, commander. Yeah, see if it works out. Yeah, because you have so many options. You can take it a bunch of different ways. Madness, yeah. Adventures. Yeah, it's very cool. really like that, that you can actually move it a bunch of different ways and you're going to get a lot of great value from it. Very cool. All right, so there, we'll mention a couple of honorable mentions really quickly. Cards that we thought, you know what, almost could make the deck, but we decided not to. Yeah. Uh, this first one, we've already mentioned it. It's Tovalar, Dire Overlord, or the Midnight Scourge. This is just your big bad werewolf-themed uh, tribal commander, but didn't quite make the cut here but it was very close right it feels like this is going to be a magnet for removal which is good in some scenarios but honestly if i'm trying to draw cards i think i'll just play faithless looting and you know filter through my deck maybe discard some stuff like right I, if i want to get cards i'll just go get cards but tovalar is so stinking cool yeah, very stinking cool. And I'm sure you can still find a way to fit the, uh, him in there if you really want to. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's also Ruxa, Patient Professor, which is great. It's a card that says creatures you control with no abilities get plus one, plus one. And then they can also assign their combat damage as though they weren't blocked. So this yep. could kind of be like a win con. All of a sudden you have three, three wolves. Even if they're blocked, they're doing that three damage anyway. Yeah, something that you have to ask yourself is, I've got all these two, two wolves. That's kind of an awkward uh, power toughness to be able to get through. Yeah. Ruxa takes care of that for us. Yeah, three makes a big difference compared to two. Um, and then Sareth the Viper's Fang uh, is a card I, I keep trying to figure out how to play. Other tap creatures you control have Death Touch and untapped creatures you control have Hexproof and then you can pay one and tap it to untap another target creature or land you control. Like that for Faldorn's ability. Yeah, that's very nice because you can untap Faldorn, do it again, get another 2-2 two -two, and then when those 2-2 two -two attacks, they all have Death Touch so they're going to be even harder to block. People try to target your commander, you can pay into uh, Sareth, untap Faldorn and now it has Hexproof. Yep. I can block with Faldorn uh, and then tap it to activate the ability. Now it has death touch, so I'm removing a creature that's coming out. Right, me. right. Lots of cool stuff. Yeah, and then, of course, an honorable mention should go to Sensei's Divining Top oh, because so you could tap this to activate it to draw a card off the top of your library. And then should you use the commander's ability, you can very easily play that card because it's just one mana and you're going to get a wolf for it and then you can instantly use it again. Exactly. So it's, it's similar to sort of that combination we see with like Bolas's Citadel where you're able to just keep playing stuff for one life over and over again. In this case, it's just great to be able to draw the top, play it for cheap, uh, or, or exile it, play it for cheap, get that wolf, and just keep that train rolling. I hope that this is something that we see uh, more and more in the future because we've seen the Prosper Treasure version of this yep. build, and now we've seen the Wolf version of this build. So Prosper is mana even with uh, Sensei's Divining Top. Mm -hmm. This deck, it's just going to be a cheap way for you to get wolves, get some card advantage. And just keep it going. Yeah. Very expensive card, though. A very so. expensive card, indeed. But if you have it, could be a really good add into this deck. Right. All right. Ten cards to take out now. The first two uh, doesn't come as a surprise to me. It is Durnan of the Yawning Portal and Passionate Archaeologist. Mm -hmm. Passionate Archaeologist is not what you want to draw. This is the background, again, that says whenever you cast a spell from exile, that this creature, or the commander, I guess, deals damage equal to that spell's value so to target the opponent. I don't think you really want that to be happening in this deck. I think you're trying to just be more efficient with what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing goes for Durnin. Four mana, three, three, must attack in order to get the ability even to get going. Too slow. Yeah, way too slow. Uh, you also decide to cut Venture Fourth. This is kind of a ramp spell, right? Yeah, it's one of those suspend ramp spells, and it's going to start looping and stuff, and... Uh I don't know. It's it's too cute for me. I've and got enough have going on. 21 other ramp spells that we can get to, so uh, no huge loss there. Uh, next up is Cerevex Tome. This is a four-mana artifact. When it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. So this is uh, basically a new dungeon that exists in uh, in Commander Legends Ball Battle for Baldur's Gate. Um, not that great. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's a four mana. You can tap it if you have the initiative. You add two uh, colorless mana instead. And then for three, you can tap it. Exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Activate it only if you've completed a dungeon. 
By the way, taking the initiative, that dungeon is pretty long, so it's going to be hard yeah. for you even to get through the dungeon, and this does not allow you to continue through the dungeon either as a four mana artifact. Our deck isn't made, made to do that, and I don't want to be like passively completing dungeons and still playing this game four hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. maybe this goes into the dungeon deck itself, but it definitely is not a great fit here. Right. Next one is Dream Pillager. It's five red, red, creature, dragon, flying, and it's a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile that many cards from the top of another player's library until in a turn you can play them blah 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 when it attacks basically and Set, no combat damage too Ugh. and it's a four four too for much seven mana so it's gonna be really hard to play this early and when you do later on it may not even be able to get through so and you it, don't know what you're gonna hit either true good point you took out one of my favorite cards in the world jake that's right it's greater gargadon <laughs> it's interesting it's nine and a red creature beast suspend 10 uh for one red for a nine seven sacrifice an artifact creature or land remove a time counter from greater gargadon activate only if it's suspended yeah so it is a free sack outlet in terms of it only costs you one red to suspend this for 10 turns uh and you can do artifact creatures or land when it comes to sacrificing but this isn't the steal and sacrifice deck right and casting greater gargadon from suspend exile is only going to happen after you get through 10 suspend counters so is it worth it to sack all these things to make a 2-2 two -two? probably not yeah exactly which things am i sacking to get that nine seven yeah uh is it a few of my two twos yeah. i hope not i hope not too uh and keeping in the very high mana valley cards to cut out sandworm convergence six green green enchantment creatures with flying can't attack you or plans or use control and at the beginning of your end step create a five five green worm creature token this card has no synergies with the deck yeah we're ramping so much that maybe it's kind of cool and yeah we'll get you an army of worms to end the game someday but that's one of those things where like uh, this is solving problems that you have if your game has run too long, so let's just not let the game run long. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, and then you got Primeval Bounty, six mana enchantment that has three things on it. When you cast a creature, you make a beast. When you cast a non-creature, you put a plus and plus encounter on the creature you control, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain three life. Again, six mana, it does a lot of nothing in a lot of ways. Um, and you're, I think you just want to refine the strategy instead of having these big sort of like, oh, cool, look at the cool things I'm doing. Because really what is so cool about putting a plus one plus one counter on the creature and then getting a 3-3 beast by the time you're playing a six mana spell. Yeah, I think that this is uh, a, an important thing for commander players to note is these three lines of text are cool. Yes, but at five and a red, you better be cool. Yeah, <laughs> you better be very, very cool. Next one is Terramorph. It's three in a green sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle, rebound. So it kind of synergizes with the exile theme yeah you can but. pass it again the next uh time it gets to your upkeep but we already have 21 ramp spells in here this is a four mana one that is not going to be that amazing i think i think you could you could easily cut some ramp stuff here especially now that in this alone we've taken out a seven drop a ten drop an eight drop and a six drop so yeah when it's not doing that it's lighting the world on fire for you know yeah the big daddies but yeah we don't play them big daddies anymore same goes for search for tomorrow this is a modern card that you see quite a bit because you can suspend it it's two and a green to basically tutor up a land onto the battlefield the basic land uh, and you can suspend it for two turns for one green mana this card is good in constructive formats because you play four of them in your deck this is not the kind of card that you're going to be happy to draw later on in the game and ask yourself do i want to spend this for two turns so i can get a two two out of it eh, probably not yeah it feels like crap when you suspend this thing and you've got your two turns and you're ready to cast it but somebody has removed your commander yeah that that sucks yeah okay so those are the 10 cards in 10 cards out always a great experiment um now how do you think this deck plays jake you did the prosper tome bound right uh, pre-con upgrade guide now you're faced again with the casting stuff from exile what do you think I think that the Prosper uh, engine is really fun. It cranks out cool stuff, but this one is more direct benefits. Uh -huh. Okay, And we can be so much more flexible. We can decide what we're doing every single turn. That one was more value. This one is more choices and sequencing. Yep. So yep. Yep. I really like this deck uh, compared to it. I think that as far as precons that I've seen, I will expect this one to do something every single time. Yeah. Like yeah. if you're a good pilot and you want to pick up a commander precon this is probably the one yeah uh, it's also you know a nifty one like it's not that difficult but it definitely rewards 
good sequencing so i would say this is almost like a great deck to train on in a lot of ways yes. and then upgrade into the direction that you really want to go because let's say you want to go werewolf travel then go nuts you know but if we, you're all about the exile thing too then you can find a lot of different synergies like we saw here today we have people at the office who have just one deck that they keep here and they get reps and reps on that deck uh because they there are specific play patterns and stuff and uh you know practice makes perfect practice makes perfect and impulse draw is not going away anytime soon so really knowing the ins and outs of it will benefit you i think in the long run especially if you're a big red player like myself mm -hmm. red is the king of impulse draw it's going to give you a lot of options over the years so you just want to pay attention to that right all right to the listeners what do you think about the exit from exile precon are you entering or are you going to be exiting on this one give us a <laughs> thumbs up or a thumbs down actually i don't even think that matters anymore because you can't see no more dislikes but definitely comment on yeah, the video yeah, yeah. Send us a tweet, message us. You can find Jake and myself on Twitter as well. And tell us, are there cards that we missed? Are there cards that you think that we should put in or that you disagree that we took out? I uh, would love to hear people's opinions. They're always valuable. And I love also that a lot of our commenters will go through our own comments and sort of sift through and learn from other people. That's a great place to get a better, to become a better player, to throw some ideas out there and see what other people think. Our comment section, I, I have to say, is filled with really, really nice and awesome people. Yeah, uh, it's a safe place to have good discussion. Yeah, and in the case that it's a bad discussion, well, you can just ignore it <laughs> and just, and just move on. Yeah, yeah. Just move on. <laughs> Slap it, slam dunk it out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, if you want to buy this precon or any of the cards that we talked about today, channelfireball.com slash command. That's our affiliate code. It's so simple. You can also just enter command at checkout, shop from the marketplace. They have some of the best sealed product prices out there. That is one of the main reasons that we love the marketplace so much. Even better, cherry on top, you're supporting a local game store when you do so. These are accredited stores that are trustworthy. They're going to have customer service. They have multiple people working there. So you're going to be able to get your cards in great condition. And also the condition specifically that you ordered them at because that's the job of a store is to do all this stuff. And you're supporting a local game store, which they have had a real tough time these past few years. Yeah. And they are they have been the source for me of so much joy and happiness in when it comes to pre-releases, trading, buying, even just walking in for the first time as a kid when I was like eight or nine years old i just loved being in the game store so support the local game store channelfireball.com slash command or enter promo code command at checkout when you get your cards when you want to be all dressed up in your wolf tribal mat your play mat your deck box whatever it is your sleeves ultra pro is the place to go you can also buy ultra pro product from their store online shop.ultrapro.com slash command that's where you can just go if you want to say i want this kind of play mat with this kind of sleeve and i want this kind of look for my deck box you'll be able to find those options there you want this kind of binder with this color on it you'll find those options there as well and you're supporting the show when you do so ultra pro we've been trusting them for a long time with our own stuff okay time to take a breath and ask you jake do you have anything for cool for the end step I think Josh might have talked about this already. I'm not <laughs> totally sure, but just in case, severance. Oh, I don't think we have. We have oh, not. And actually today, amazing. someone else demanded that I see it. Severance is one of the best TV shows that I've seen in a very long time. Like we sat down, uh, me and my fiance, we sat down and we watched one episode and was like, all right, yeah, that's really good. I, I think I could do another one. Okay. 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 And then we're halfway through the season and we're like, crap, we got to go to bed now. It's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> or we could watch one more episode. I did that with Stranger Things. Big mistake. Yeah, big mistake <laughs> with Stranger Things, but maybe not so much with Severance. I've heard incredible things. It's on Apple TV Plus, correct? Yeah, the whole premise is basically what if you had a mental block between your home life and your work life? So you walk into the doors of work mm. and you're a completely different person. Oh. So all, it's like a really simple concept, but what are all the social implications of that? Like, are, is the person who's at work a prisoner uh right and you know is the person keeping the prison the exterior person who's living their own life oh and then interesting the, it brings up obvious conversations about work-life balance and yeah i don't have that many problems with that here because you know i really like what i do <laughs> and I like all the <laughs> people too. i work with me too but, yeah i've heard great things about it i hear it's pretty surreal at times as well it's cool. um, someone told me that it felt like a black mirror episode that got turned into a full season of a show yeah uh, there's going to be more than one season as well so if you have apple tv plus or you're th you've been thinking about diving in it seems like the show to do it for yeah josh uh sings 
raise the prices of it and he's got really high standards for this stuff yeah so. for sure yeah and i rarely recommend stuff and when people recommend stuff to me i make sure they know that i have a very discerning taste as well and so now this is the second time in a single day someone's talking about severance so good so it seems like it's pretty good i would definitely check it out myself uh, and do in, not talk about it in the comments section do not do yet. not spoil it that we do not talk about in the comment yeah. section no spoilers because it seems like the kind of show that would have some pretty juicy spoilers and cliffhangers yeah yeah it's it's pretty fancy and and the look of it is just like it makes you want to go out there and make movies you know uh, how it is yeah, right I, I do know how it is indeed all right well thanks so much for that jake we'll make sure to check that out uh me and my wife would I, we've been looking for something new to watch so i can't wait to check that out you're gonna love it all right clean up set big thanks to our amazing team here at the command zone we got arthur mellicroft shauna gillis damon lens lady danger manson lung craig blanchett ashlyn rose josh murphy jake boss right Let's next go. to me josh lee Kwai, not next to us patrick nan jordan Pridgen, sam waller grav Goli, chuck ty jamie block evan limberg and mitch trafford Look at all them stinking names, dude. I know. It's, it gets How about this business of yours? Every time. You know, sometimes I might just add some random names, like Elmo, and see if anyone <laughs> knows this. Yeah, is. like Car Talk. <laughs> yeah, all three of you still watching the video right now also know that we thank Jeffrey Palmer at the end of all of our episodes. He does our Living Card animations at Living Cards MTG on Twitter. He does Paddington memes. Now he does Paddington <laughs> memes as well, which makes me love his Twitter feed all the more because I just get to see Paddington on the front of some often grotesque magic cards. Yeah, they're it's great. They are exploding. They're so funny. Yeah, they're great. Uh, anyway, thanks so much everyone for watching. Please let us know in the comments what you think about the exit from Exile Precon and Baldur's Gate in general. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks, Jake, for being on today. Great right. job with the Precon Upgrade Guide and we'll see you all next time. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs>